rebirth. Thou seest. Matthew chapter 27 verses 11 to 14. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said unto him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. The King James Bible. Approach each situation with the premise that there is much to learn. The depth of the words of Christ at any point should never be underestimated. Wisdom is never outdated. According to the scattered accounts of Christ's trial, he chose to remain fairly silent, knowing that everything he said would be twisted and turned against him. In responding, thou sayest, in response to being asked who he was, he led his accusers only to convict themselves. Given enough rope, we only entangle ourselves in our own foolishness. Have you ever tried to untangle a fishing line or a fishing net? It truly requires the patience of a saint. That we know not what we say is a universal truth from the standpoint that we know not fully the long-term consequences of any of our immediate actions. Each action cascades into the next and so on down through history. Christ's bloodline was of prostitutes, warmongers, and possibly murderers. In our haste to reach judgment, we focused on past aspects rather than alternative future outcomes. We deny ourselves the infinity that God represents. In the question is the quest, and in the assumption is the critic. In our race to prove right and admonish wrong, we overlook much to seek the perfect answer to every question. But there is no perfection in man. Even those saved still need to further refine their acts and sometimes redefine their purpose to stay on track. God is a transformative purpose. Who would question God? Who would criticize Christ? God is rightfully just in his judgment and in his mercy. There is no one life that is more important than any other in God's eyes. As such, to reject God's compassion is to invite his wrath. For man may act, but he does not get to choose. There is a path for the right and a trial for the wrong. Wickedness is always punished, whether in high or low places. God is gracious and lenient up to a point. Truly, he is no respecter of the position of a man. Society is hypocritical and oxymoronic at best. Man's rules favor some over others. Court is just a game. Christ asks only that you follow 
God asks only that you believe. The result is that God forgives those who trust in him through reception of Christ as a saviour and as a guide. Then, as far as the east is from the west, we may be separated from our sins. Such faith requires consistency and obedience. Pasts may be. Just know that good habits make good men. Disobedience will keep God from answering your prayers. Trust is a must. You don't know what God is going to do. And you don't know what you don't know. Whether you view God as a person, or a spirit, or a force, or an entity, it simply matters that you can feel that He is there. And that you are prepared to follow wheresoever you are called to go, knowing therein that right is often as dangerous as wrong is often safe. Christ came to save all. His standards remain exemplary. His lessons transcend time. His kindness was boundless. He stirred up the water. For men of God must often defy kings. Men of God must forever have discernment in their heart. Likewise, men of sin are owed no loyalty. Man's pride causes him to rebel against God. Man thinks that he needs no help or guidance. Wisdom requires humility at all times. Evil is real. Yet on the flip side, good does not always appear good at first. False prophets are rife and smooth and sophisticated. One naturally supports another. Demons are spirits of temptation and seduction. Don't fool with fools. Don't worship idols. Muster care over who you watch and who you will follow. Veer and diverge only when God guides you. Paths will cross. Everyone is equal at the cross of Christ. Equality is found only in the natural laws of the Bible. Equity is balanced by impartiality. Disobedience to the laws of God lead only to some form of enslavement. Understand whom God has chosen to lead. Many who seek leadership are unworthy. Where men fail, the woman must lead and be great in their ways, being sweet to friends and sharp to enemies. Know that the head without the hands is nothing. Repentance is a request for salvation and delivery. Know what and where you lack. Understand that can depends on will. We can accomplish nothing without God. Too many people try to do too much on their own. Learn where you can. Travel with one and all. Listen to captains and carpenters equally alike. Know that then the Lord will travel with you. Live your lessons. Bother none that you do not wish to bother you. Happiness is easily taken for granted and easily taken away. Friendship is easily betrayed. When you feel the most secure, then you are the least safe, as the safest places are often little more 
than prisons. Best to make God your friend, as he will not betray you. When you know that many will forsake you, then foolish you are to not give all your trust to God. Faith must be total and absolute. It takes faith to venture out into the world. It takes faith to do things for the first time. It takes faith to let go of the past and embrace the future. Both judges and harlots who show unwavering faith are equal in the eyes of God. All God-ordained authority is jurisdictional. Rebellion can be lawful resistance if ordained by God. Anarchy is the domain of devils. Anarchy has no place in the heart of a Christian. Anarchy is rebellion against the laws of God and nature. Anarchy avoids rightful procedure. Anarchy is indifferent to the truth. Rightful messages are always principled. Rightful governance is ordered. Most want to win simply because everybody loves a winner. Yet lesser evils are still evils. God has a will and a time and a plan. God has his way. God comes neither too soon nor too late. Know God and his ways, and you will see how, at the right moment, he will bless you. Know who to pray to and who to pray for, and you shall learn how the blessed find their true faith. With God, nothing shall seem impossible, and yet with honour comes pains. His house is not a temple. His attention may be sought, but his favour shall not be won. God's kingdom is a spiritual promise. His reign has no end. The spirit may remain long after the body has weakened. For the most worthy faith alone may heal. We do not know what our service will lead to, yet still we must be willing to follow wheresoever that we are led. We must humble ourselves through sight of our own significance to God and our apparent insignificance to many of the needs of society. It is often healthy to be unaccustomed to certain customs Salute simply those with a sanity of purpose. Know that God may favour a child over an adult. God may favour a woman before a man. God may favour the blind over the sighted. Know that physical strength is not the same as spiritual strength. Physical help is not the same as spiritual support. Physical attributes matter less than spiritual attributes. Know that whatsoever task you are given by God, you must ensure that it is done. You carry your sins, but not alone. Lastly, our tasks must not let us forget ourselves or our place and who we truly are in spirit. We pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen.